Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris White Reports. This is Chris live in central Pennsylvania, your favorite colonel. <laughs> I'm back once again, and my guest today is none other than uh, the conscious character, Ernst von Sale. We're going to talk a little bit today about self-bestia. I don't know how you get pronunciation stia out of that. There's two U's. It should be subspestia. But anyway, Hans, how are you? Well, I'm very good. Thank you, uh, Chris. Um, and yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been a, a lot that's happened since we uh, chatted the last time. I mean, uh, the documentary has hit 15,000 views, so I'm very happy. And uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me on. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Well, I'd love to say that's because uh, I drove people to watch your program, but I think it's probably because <laughs> you were on every other channel under the sun after we talked. <laughs> and uh, it's probably probably what's driving it. But it's definitely, uh, folks, we're talking about uh, the movie documentary that uh, Aaron has directed and produced uh, called Self Bastille. Um, I, I translate that in English as self reliance. Is that a good way to do it? Yeah, Chris, the big challenge is that Self Bastille doesn't really have a a perfect direct translation for English. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of translations are kind of in the right ballpark, but not really. Uh, self governance, uh, self reliance, um, self management—they're all in that in that Venn diagram, but not specifically right what it is. But it's I think it creates the the right impression, so I think people get the right idea. But like I said, the challenge is uh, getting that perfect translation, which uh, eludes us. Well, that's a challenge. Being as a public lot, that's a challenge with languages. They don't often translate very well. German does the same thing. Sometimes the word looks like it'll translate directly and it makes sense to you because you recognize the two words in English, but that's not exactly what it means when you get it to English. But, you know, there's other languages like uh, Korean. Uh, in the North Koreans they have something like called juche or something like that, which is, you know, uh, like grit or do it yourself and get it done. So I don't know. But uh, self reliance to me sound like a, a good way to describe it. And in fact, Aaron, uh, I did a little bit of that self reliance. And self bestier when I was in South Africa, out on anti poaching patrols on uh, Molitedi uh, Reservoir in the Northwest Province, and then out with Afri Forms Neighborhood Watch, running around and uh, hunting down uh, homebreakers, uh, people breaking into homes in uh, Zerust. So uh, I got to be part of that while I was in South Africa. Oh, well, very cool. Um, I'm glad to hear that you got to see some of the oaks in action. I mean, that's that's what's necessary. That need that's what needs to be done. Is that volunteers out of communities are mobilizing to make sure their communities are safe. You, and that's the whole message of uh, the documentary. Is that uh, you can't just keep waiting on someone stronger or smarter or more well connected than you, uh, some leader on a white horse on the horizon to come save you. You're going to have to be that hero yourself. You're going to have to be that big figure in your community yourself. You don't have to be a De La Rey. Uh, to make a very big difference and to really be a hero uh, within your community. And we are in a time that uh, demands uh, the, those that uh, have the heroic spirit to step forward and to start doing their part. But you do what you can with what you have. That's the important thing. Not all of us have to dedicate uh, dozens and dozens of hours every week to a, a, a community-based cause. If you don't have that time, you don't have to. Each one of us doesn't have to donate thousands of rands to uh, community-based initiatives like AfriForum if you don't have that money. Um, but nothing's stopping you from giving 50 rand. Nothing is stopping you from dedicating an hour or two hours in your week um, to some community-based initiative. Those things are very reachable and doable. And uh, I know for a fact uh, a lot of AfriForum's members, for example, are people that they're not rich. They're not uh, earning tens of thousands of rands. A lot of them uh, earn close to a, a minimum wage, and they still support things bigger than themselves because they, they understand the principle principle that alone your little contribution can't really do much but a lot hundreds of thousands of little contributions can achieve quite a lot uh, you can't build a, a technical college with 50 rand or with 10 rand but with 500,000 10 rands or uh, 50 rands every month uh, put into a, a building fund you can build a, a, a great monument like Saltic. That's the principle at play here is uh, making big money with small money by pooling it all together and no contribution is too small. Well, in fact, you mentioned Saltec. That's another one of my adventures in my recent trip to South Africa. Mm. I went to Saltec on the campus. Uh, the video will be coming out that sometime soon. Last night, I was busy editing the Basutu Cultural Village. That took me some time to, to get it just right. But I'll get around to the Saltec. Another example, as you said, of pooling resources and working together. But, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if 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 the Trek Boers 
had, um, oh, I have that mug. Where's it at? Where's it at? I got it here somewhere. I was drinking. Oh, there it is up there on the shelf. Oh, you can't see it because I got this. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> see the, the yeah. open felt behind yeah. you. It's in the felt. It's right there next to a caracal lying in the bush hunting. <laughs> no, no, it's on the shelf behind me. I have that mug. I picked it up at the four tracker mine. But, um, Very nice. Yeah, but um, if the four trackers had not um, had a bit of self bestier on their own, uh, the the Dutch would still be pseudo Dutch and in the Cape and drinking Earl Grey tea instead of the great adventures they had in the past two centuries in Southern Africa. There would be no Afrikaner folk as such today if it wasn't for the trek boars and their self bestier. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you you don't have to look uh, you don't have to look hard through history to find a lot of inspiration behind this idea. This is not something new that uh, we just thought up yesterday. It's it's an idea older than Afrikaner, the Afrikaner people itself. It's an idea that's actually rooted very deeply in our history as uh, as a, civili a Western civilization almost, where, they, believe it or not, there was a time before the state, a time before these mega governments that we have today, where towns and communities were self-reliant on many in many regards and were able to look after themselves and peep in indiv the individuals like you and me could do a lot more and take on a lot more responsibilities than uh, a lot of us can do today uh, our ancestors had a lot of skills in regards to uh, maintaining their home keeping their community safe farming uh, botany working with animals there's a lot of skills that we've just outsourced to uh, bigger uh, conglomerates and bigger organizations of people sometimes for good sometimes for bad and for bad is when it comes to the government that just comes to you and say well don't you worry about security don't you worry about uh, uh, preserving your language don't you worry about preserving your history we'll take care of that don't worry don't worry and uh, it's that uh, allure that has tempted not just the Afrikaners, but many uh, peoples throughout history to trust the government then to take over all these responsibilities. And then one day you end up with a, a government that's uh, the absolute just mess and catastrophic uh, dumpster fire that is the ANC government. And then you've given it all these responsibilities and they can't meet them. And now you have to reinvent the wheel from the beginning because you can't remember how to do many of those basic things that your ancestors used to. Well, absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, if you're counting on the state, <laughs> good luck with that. I mean, uh, back in Chile announced today that they're on the case, the cat in the hat. Uh, no reference to the caracal there, but the cat in the hat is on the case. Uh, they're on the verge of solving the uh, Kiernan Forbes murder, a.k.a. the famous rapper in South Africa, just a few weeks after he was murdered in cold blood, caught on film. They got it on film and they couldn't solve it, but apparently the cell phone data is going to help them. Here we sit two and a half years later and we're waiting for a resolution to the murder, domestic terrorism, torture, murder of young Brendan Horner, 21-year-old farm manager in the Free State and near Senegal. He has uh, yet to be uh, get any justice for the brutal slaying that took place that stole his life from him. Not even a landowner, simply a farm manager. And we've got nothing from the state. They failed to do their job. So, uh, Brendan, we haven't forgotten you. Well, the... Chris, you also have to mention Becky Chele uh, this week with uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's long-awaited cabinet reshuffle. He's uh, Cyril's trusted man. I mean, uh, he he kept his position. Is he is he uh, a trusted uh, man, or does he have dirt on Cyril? Does he have the receipts for the Pala Pala cash? <laughs> you may never know. Uh, maybe we will. But yeah, Chris. No, it's. Uh, I mean, just look at the types of. Uh, just useless ministers that uh, Sora Ramaphosa trusts with very critical positions. And that's that should be enough to disillusion you with the fact that the government is not going to come save you. You're either going to take uh, uh, your security and your water and electricity slowly but surely into your own hands, uh, or you're going to be waiting for nothing. You're going to be waiting for a, a, a savior that never comes. Well, I and like I say, these, these, uh, these things aren't so... It's not realistic to think they're going to happen overnight. A community doesn't become state-proof overnight, but you become 1% state-proof, then 2%, 3%, one little brick at a time. And we've done that to a very large degree in many communities. I mean, there's now four towns in the free state um, that are very close to becoming uh, uh, free from from load shedding because they've uh, they've left of they they've they've given up on the government and they've trusted the the power to uh, uh, or the ability to generate power with a with a private firm.
Well, absolutely. I was going to say it's it's long past the time that South Africans and Americans and Europeans, for that matter, start to recognize that the greatest threat to their sovereignty, to their individual liberty, to their very lives is the state itself. In South Africa, the state is the reason why the economy is so abysmal. It's the reason for racial bifurcation. It's the reason for the vast criminal syndicates that run rampant with no threat of prosecution, bar barely any threat of arrest, and they do what they want. Two ministers in uh, Sir Ron Poza's cabinet tied to the criminal syndicates and cartels that are destroying ESCOM, according to Andre de Ryder. And that's been verified now by independent investigation by Daily Maverick, once again doing some great investigative reporting. The state is preying on the citizens in South Africa, and it's happening here in America, continuously taking our money. I mean, my, my cable bill for my internet and my cable, which I don't watch, but I use the internet, has climbed by over $100 in the last 18 months. Not because they're charging more for the services, they're actually taking services away to try to keep the price lower. It's all taxes and fees that have been levied by a corrupt, thieving Biden administration and a Pennsylvania uh, state that are stealing money from us with no input from citizens. The same thing in South Africa. You know, I just recently uh, got my bill added on my rental for my hire, 900 Rand for tolls. And somebody said, why are you paying the tolls? I don't have an option. You guys say you're not paying them when you get the bill, but the bill goes to Avis. Avis puts it on my credit card. Nothing I can do about it. So somebody's paying tolls and that somebody's me. <laughs> and they're just stealing my money. And what are you getting for it? Total chaos, no jurisprudence, no jurisdiction, no, no, nothing whatsoever. It's it's really, really mm. sad. So let me ask you this question. That was a long statement. Uh, if you want to respond to it, you're welcome to. But I want to ask a question now. Um, what was the inspiration for doing this movie, self -bestier? What, what? I mean, was it your idea? Did someone suggest it? By the way, you got a nice little chip on the bottom there. The enamel it looks like a genuine used mug there. That's mine. Mine brand oh, new. Oh, yeah. That's that's the beauty of, uh, of these enamel mugs, uh, Chris. I actually love those little details. It makes them unique. There's no other mug in the world like this one. Well, I, well, mine's close, but it's got chips in different spots. But I, when I got it, I noticed after the fact that I had chips, I didn't look for the one that wasn't on. And I realized that hey, puts character in it. But anyway, mm. what was uh, what was the motivation? What got you going was someone up to it or was it your idea or is it something after reform said Ernst uh, get off your bum and go make a movie <laughs> <laughs> right so uh, Flip Bice the, the chairperson of the solidarity movement um, always wanted a, a community federalism or self bestir self-sufficiency uh, documentary for Afri Forum to really put out there on display our plan for the future I mean I made this remark at the premiere in my speech I said um, nothing that Afri Forum or the Solidarity Movement does is secretive or behind closed doors or in shadowy corners. We make documentaries about our plan for the future. We put it out there in the bright sunlight for everyone to see what we are planning and what we're doing and how we plan to achieve it. But Flip, uh, Flip Base really wanted a, a solid documentary and film to show or put our plan because he's written a book on it. He's written an extensive book on our plan, exactly step by step what we plan to do, what we want to achieve. But it's not been translated to a, a visual medium. So he challenged uh, challenged me to to make the documentary, to make that finally uh, a documentary that uh, does justice to the bigger plan uh, that Afri Forum and the Solidarity Movement have. So I took up the challenge, and it took more than a, well, it should it took just under a year to create. But uh, I absolutely didn't do it alone. I mean, I had an amazing team from Afri Forum TV uh, that helped me. Amazing camera camera work editing uh, a lot of admin and logistics that had to be done sound mixing recording so many uh, people that played a role i mean without them uh, i made the joke that without that amazing team uh, my movie would have been me talking into a webcam for 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> well listen i'm gonna have to uh get the uh, Reform uh film crew to start helping me out when i come to south africa and doing some production quality videos because i put a lot of time and effort in promoting south africa and what's going on but let me just just very quickly here, uh, Nick Grove just gave a gift membership for someone. Let me very quickly run through some of the folks in the chat. And there's a couple comments I want to bring in very quickly before we get away from. Mm -hmm. So Fiona's in from the UK. Nico Nell is here. Anne-Marie Nell. Barry Miles. Um, and then, uh, what's this? Um, oh, sorry. Hendo is here, our, our uh, moderate extraordinaire. Erica, recovering from her stroke. She's here as well. And then we've got SMS. Um, I guess that's short message service. I'm not sure. But <laughs> Nick has just given another gift membership. And then uh, who else we got? Uh, we've got... Uh, Myra Page, welcome, Myra. Good to see you then. Garrett Gillich is back in once again. 
And then down here, there's some comments coming up. Boss up, ZA. And then we've got uh, Val Cooper's back, as usual. Boss says, yes, 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 Chris. Someone had to say it. People tell me South Africa Circus, and I beg to differ. The people that govern South Africa clowns, not the country. South Africa is a wonderful country. Yes, it is a wonderful country. Unfortunately, you're being led by a racketeering cartel. And it's not much different here in America. Brian Lawrenson's here. And Herman Ruiz, my friend, the tobacco farmer, uh, belated happy birthday. I did travel up there. Also, I believe Aaron's friend as well, uh, traveled up there to his farm to give him a Sharks jersey. You know, you can get them anywhere, Sportsman's Warehouse, but I picked it up at uh, Kings Park. Sorry, Hollywood Bets Kings Park in Durban and hand carried it up there to visit him on his uh, when he celebrated his birthday. And uh, okay, the Colonel Troutman to my Rambo. That's good, Sigma. I like that one. And then uh, Tin says, people should realize a helping hand is at the end of your own arm. Anyone that is not still not doing anything to be self-reliant is going to have a rude awakening. God bless. Absolutely. And then there was this was the best little comment I think I saw there a moment ago. It said, uh, Nick Grove said, Cyril got wet like the gremlins. Overnight, they butted and spawned more ministers, ministries and deputies. Yeah, don't don't feed the gremlins after midnight. So there you go. Julie Bourdon is here as well. Somebody said, oh, you got snow. Yeah, well, it does snow in the free state. That's not a surprise, folks. Roxanne Fleischner, good to see you again. Charles Van Onselen is now a member, courtesy Nick Grove's gift membership. That's very kind. Charles is always here. And uh, what else we got here? I know there was another comment I want to get in here. Dion uh, Kuchelen. Oh, man, that's a tough name. I would pronounce it in German. Kuchelen. That's uh, Kuchlenberg. Kuchlenberg. I would never have gotten that. Okay. It says, where can I see this film about self-sufficiency? Go to the uh, to Every Forum website. Is that correct? Uh, it's YouTube. the Every Forum YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube and channel, uh, yeah. it will be, it's called self Bestir. You can just search self Bestir uh, on, uh, in the YouTube search uh, bar and you'll find it we either the first or the second result you'll see it's called a uh, self bestier uh, starts bestanden oplossings for die toekomst and uh, in the title is also documentar and it's on the uh, afri forum uh, youtube page but if you don't find it through search just go to the afri forum youtube page it, it's not the latest video but it should be in the top 10 somewhere you'll see the one with fifteen thousand views um and that has the titles uh, orange and yellow title uh, on this, on the the thumbnail. Well, there you go, the House of Orange from the Netherlands. But <laughs> Herman Roos has <laughs> just given five dollars super chat. He said he did. So to help you pay for the tolls, thanks for the visit. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Cedric says, does AfriForum have any alternative business funding ch channels as alternative to IDC type funding bodies? How do they support self? Uh, how do you support? The, yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, uh, I've been asked about AfriForum. People said, you know, the mechanisms you have, the government can track who's making payments, and they're a little bit nervous about giving money. Is there another way, a PayPal or something? like that where people can donate to AfriForum. Uh, I've, I've not really finished greeting mm. everybody, but it seems like an apropos time to ask that question. Do you know about that, Aaron? Mm. Um, I'm sure there is. Uh, if you if you are living outside of South Africa, you can make a one sort of donation uh, if you go to Friends of AfriForum. And then uh, if you don't want to become a member, but you want to donate um, through another means, Sure. Uh, you're going to have to send. A, there's probably a way. I don't know uh, off the top of my head. You can send an inquiry to um, to AfriForum through the website, just through uh, the, the contact details there. You can just send an inquiry and ask if there's exactly that question and sh someone should get back to you. Uh, that's not um, the finances are not my department. So I unfortunately can't off the top of my head now remember if there's uh, specifically a way that you can do that, but there should be. All right, cool beans. Well, we've got several people becoming members, courtesy of the gift memberships here. We're actually on a surge here. A couple of people have really been pushing the memberships. We're approaching 200 paid members for the channel, for a channel with less than 10,000 subscribers. That's actually pretty impressive. Uh, of course, a lot of those people will get the free membership, and then after a month, it'll expire. So uh, hopefully we can keep up. Hank Kloper's here. Welcome to you. And uh, Nick Grove says he's handing out one by one because YouTube returned them. You know, yesterday, Ernst, I covered Cyril's uh, non-event uh, announcing his ludicrous uh, cabinet shuffling there. And uh, we had an audience of 11,000 who tuned in during the broadcast and we had a peak of 805. We managed to get 200 plus new subscribers, but I think we got about 30 new memberships courtesy of people donating them and people signing up. It was pretty exciting stuff yesterday. Well, not Cyril, but, but the broadcast. The broadcast was kind of exciting. So this movie... In this movie, for those who go and watch it, it's, it's listen, all right, now, I said this to um, Ronaldo, and he rolled his eyes like, oh, Chris knows everything, so anyway, but I said this to Ronaldo, I said, you know, I watched, because I was at the premiere, and by the way, once again, bye-bye, mm -hmm. donkey, for the invitation, um, I'm really glad I was able to reschedule things so that I could come to the premiere at Afri Forum Theater, and Dean Chansey was also there, the, the singing cowboy. Yeah, no, I was very glad that uh, those two events could sync up the fact that you're in South Africa and the premiere of the documentary, and just the... 
A quick disclaimer also for your uh, exclusively English listeners, the documentary does have English subtitles. Yeah. So if you don't understand Afrikaans, it's not beyond your, your and reach. And they're uh, actually very well done. They're, they're, they're accurate. It's not one of these things where somebody gets complete. Last night I was watching the, um, uh, what's the, um, All Quiet on the Western Front, the latest German version film filmed mm -hmm. in 2022, which is all. Oh, after that, I just was so angry at Joe Biden, you know, remembering what it's like being a war. It brought it all back to me. Uh, mm. not, not the trench war warfare but just the, the, the poignant the barbarity of it and what's go what happened in that movie but i watched it and the translations were terrible i mean the german i was english you could let it was very good the english was done you can understand it but what they said in german was not even the same they're using they mentioned rabbits you know trying to describe people and it was something completely different so but the the translation on this is excellent it's fantastic for people to follow along in english and it's really well done but but back to ronaldo so i told ronaldo when i mentioned the film to him i said yeah ronaldo i mean there wasn't anything i really learned in the film film. Uh, I knew uh, all the yeah. stuff in there. However, the cinematography, the presentation, the narration, the way it was all put together was so compelling that I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. And I said, if a film does that, it's a success. I mean, if you know nothing about it and you find it interesting, that's a success. But if, if you know the material and you're still like drawn right on in like this, uh, it has to be a really good film. So congratulations once again. I thought it was amazing. Mm. Um, and I guess that's my, my way of saying I know everything. So, <laughs> according to Ronaldo. <laughs> no, thank you, uh, Chris. I, I made a point of the fact that we need to show off the, the different, the diversity of geography and scenes and uh, just beauty in South Africa as well. Um, and also that all the people that we interviewed, I also specifically said to the cameramen, um, we need to film the the interviews that every person that's doing an interview you can see they are sitting in the pl in the place where they are talking about or they they speak they they're doing the interview in a, in a context that's relevant to what they're talking about so for example um heinrich weingart is talking about uh, the cape and uh, cape town so you can see table mounts in the background helen zilla is talking about cape and cape town so you see uh, table mountain and the cape town in the background um uh, Robert Diagon is also talking about uh, his experience of the Cape. So he's and he lives in a in a traditional type of uh, Cape Dutch house. So he, we filmed it in his house. Um, Arends Roots uh, it has the the Fuertrecker monument uh, in the background of his interview. Kali Krill has the Fuertrecker monument in the background of his interview. Nobody's doing an interview in a generic office that can be anywhere from Cape Town to Berlin. Uh, everyone is sitting in a in very undeniably within South Africa, firstly. And secondly, as a bonus, most of them are also sitting within a context directly relating to the, the type of content that they're talking about. And then my power just went on. So uh, my lighting. I wonder why I got the light just got better there. <laughs> well, you, you, you mentioned the player, then that's actually well done. But okay, so uh, Robert Dygan, that's uh, Mara Bani, the reformed leftist, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he got a little too much camera time in your movie. That's the only complaint I have, all right? He, I haven't seen him since I promoted him a couple of years and he disappeared on me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Nick Groves just gave a super chat of 140 round. Thank you for that. It says, thank you for managing to anchor the conscious... Conscious Caracal. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, we'll be up uh, after this on your program at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. South African time talking about Africa in 2023. Uh, now, mm -hmm. uh, for those um, who watch that program, in the absence of Aaron, as I ran the studio after he rudely left courtesy of load shedding, uh, we've already done that program. We're going to do it again here in about 40, about mm. half an hour. <laughs> mm. No, I really want, because Chris, you, you did an amazing job of keeping the audience entertained, but I, I felt that I wanted to do it in this complete and I wanted to be there so because I I do I do a little basic script for episodes of what I want to ask but I usually adapt my questions and the flow of the episode to how we're talking I mean we can focus on one little country if you really have a lot to share um, so I, I thought I think it would be better even though you did a great job with the the first one in my absence to do it over from the beginning to end completely with me uh, present from the beginning to end and also that I can end it uh, on a good note not just on some weird cut off note because I mean <laughs> that the, was weird you had <laughs> to jump on there on your mobile to cut it off <laughs> <laughs> I had to do a weird Jippo uh, 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 work around to end the stream because that's the thing with stream yards if you're not online on stream yards you can't end the stream it was just going to go on forever and my internet was completely gone 
So I found a workaround, but that that meant that I just quickly had to come on in the stream without even saying goodbye. Uh, you just disappear <laughs> off the off the screen. So I, I didn't it didn't feel right having it in like that. So that's why I thought now well, let's do it over, and uh, let's do it proper. Proper. No, nah, no, nah, it's quite all right. Look, I mean, it's 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 difficult for me. I mean, I'm so shy. I, I really don't like to be on camera. It took a lot for me to convince me to come back on your program. <laughs> <laughs> come back in your program. Yeah, I never would have guessed. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I should mention that, um, you know, I wasn't alone at uh, that event. Dean Chansey was there, of course, an Anglophone, mm. as was Mark Oppenheimer and David Ansara. We were the Anglophone table right there in the front. You know, yeah. I sat down at the front and all these boors didn't sit with me. I felt like maybe I, we did have load shedding. I hadn't been showering or something there, but then uh, the Anglophone sat down with me and I felt a lot better. But next to me mm. at the table, next to me was a great, uh, a wonderful pleasure. And I got to meet afterwards, a gentleman came up to me a very distinguished gentleman and thanked me for all i had done in mentoring his son and i was puzzled mm -hmm. a second and it was your father um mm -hmm. i don't know that i've mentored you uh, aaron stuff if i have uh, i'm grateful that i've been able to play a role in that but uh your father seems to think that i've played a role there so that was very generous him and i got to meet your mom it was a distinct pleasure they're lovely people mm. yeah they flew all the way from the western cape to come see the premier so it was very nice to have them there and uh, yeah it was a it was very nice to to have uh, some of the anglophone uh, guests also there you were in the vast minority so you can uh, <laughs> uh see what uh, the, the this whole minority thing is all about when it comes to linguistic stuff and with uh, with cultures but uh, and that's I mean one of the themes of the documentary as well how do you survive as a minority uh, in a in a central state that's one of the lessons that south tyrol also very clearly uh, demonstrated and also a region that you have, know quite a lot about which is the weirdest coincidence um and yeah so uh, but uh, just know the, the 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 exclusively english speakers that were invited to the premiere were were handpicked because they were like i said in the in the opening friends of freedom and uh, that's those are the types of people that were in attendance there no, it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, nice little setup there, uh, the way they've got screens in multiple places so everyone can get a good view. There's no bad view in the Afri Forum Theater, at least that I saw. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you so much for going. Um, listen, um, now, look, um, it's at the risk of your head exploding and, or, you know, swelling here a little bit, um, you're not exactly a young kid. I mean, you're not 15 or 18 or 20 or something like that. You, you've already made your way in the world. You're, you're being successful. You've done some things. But um, it's been, uh, I think, over three years since we first came in contact. And, and to me, I can see a, a young man that's really, um, in those three years, matured and become much more bigger part of, of society. And you're playing a big role there. That's that's my perception. And uh, it's really cool to see you, uh, uh, mature, not the maturation of you into that role. I don't know if you realize it's happening, but I can see it from afar. And it's it's really cool to watch. Um, so um, not that you're a younger version of me, but uh, <laughs> no, but, but uh, it's really cool to watch. And, and I just wanted to compliment you on that and all the work that you're doing. Mm, well, thank you very much, Chris. And yeah, like I said, uh, I'm I'm very fortunate to get the opportunities that I have from from Afri Forum and that they trusted me with this big uh, responsibility and project, um, and hopefully it uh, it does well enough and is received well enough to that I get a, a another a project like this. I mean the the reception and uh, response has been amazing uh, since the premiere. I mean the 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 biggest critique i've gotten was the fact that some sometimes the subtitles are a little bit hard to read because the the background might be a little bit white but i mean that's the that's the extent of it the vast vast majority of feedback is incredibly positive people are talking about exactly what i wanted to achieve with the documentary and that is to inspire people to become involved in their community and not think that their contribution and what they can do is insignificant or that they they can't make a difference. I mean, that's the big thing holding people back is that they they constantly fall into this mental trap of thinking that, but I can't do anything. I don't, I'm not smart enough. I'm not influential enough. Um, and what can I do? And the, the whole documentary is out there to answer that question. So, you know, there's a lot that you can do with whatever your with is within your capacity. And I'm, I'm very glad that that's the feedback that I'm also getting that a lot of people were, were inspired by it to, to in their capacity and what, and with what they have to, to make a difference in their community and the, the wider society around them. 
Absolutely, I, I agree one hundred percent with that. Listen, if you're if you're looking for other examples of places that are sort of self governing, um, it's not maybe not the perfect example, but a fine little example is here. And if if you go, let me know, and I'll join you because it'll be a journey of discovery for me as well. And that's a French speaking Saint Pierre and Miguel, which is located off the coast of Nova Scotia, two little French islands that are part of France and semi autonomous, uh, self governing, but part of France. They're French citizens, and France is responsible for the national defense. Of course, Canada is not a major threat to them unless juicy trudeau winds up there on the weekend that might be a threat but but saint pierre miguel a little uh little archipelago of two islands off the coast of canada so you might want to check that out sometime um and look at how do you status. spell it so it's saint pierre and what's the sick oh, oh uh, uh m-i-q yep that's it u-e-l yeah yep yep take a look it's like very tiny we could see the whole thing in a day <laughs> but um that's a unique oh, sort of governing thing too and uh yeah it's uh, it's not the easiest to get to you'd fly to canada be the smart move and then and then travel over there mm -hmm. but it's quite interesting if you're looking for another example not the perfect example like south Tyrol. south Tyrol is absolutely spot on for a self-governing semi-autonomous province with an ethnic mm -hmm. minority here um, it's an ethnic majority they're french speakers but they're on the doorstep of canada so it's an mm -hmm. artifact of french colonial era the only piece of north america that the french retain uh, from their colonial era but it is interesting and you might want to take a look at it mm, no absolutely chris it hasn't been on my radar um i'll, I'll definitely have a look i mean the the Seeing as the documentary has English subtitles, I've been getting uh, uh, reviews and comments on it from all across the world. I mean, uh, uh, a youth, uh, uh, the youth uh, league of what was it? The the Christian Democratic Party in Slova Slovakia wrote a, a, a review on of it on their website of a very detailed review on the on the documentary, and they said it, it inspired them as well. And they wrote it in Slovak in their in the um, mother tongue, and it was amazing to hear. I mean, I just got this email from Slovakia last week, and it was the strangest thing, but it's amazing to hear. Um, and then also, um, I know some uh, some international viewers as well from the USA and other places in Europe have also given me very uh, great feedback on um, the the specifically the documentaries, uh, what it covers, and how it in how it has inspired them. No, it's uh, it's it's good to hear that. You know, Slovakia is an interesting case, of course, the velvet divorce from uh, the Czechoslovak Republic. Czech Republic and Slovakia went their own way. And, of course, Czech Republic got mm -hmm. silly and starts calling themselves Czechia now, which is very confusing because there's a place called Chechnya in the Caucasus. So when they say Czechia, it's very confusing. But uh, Slovakia, interesting, um, used to have um, ethnic minorities, including some Poles, some ethnic Germans were there, Ruthenians were there, Romani or Gypsy, as most people know, the Gypsies. Uh, all minorities within Slovakia, a very small little country, amazing mm -hmm. high Tatra mountains. Absolutely. That's one of my bucket list things. I've never been. I've been to the Czech Republic and I've been to Silesia, which was stolen from Germany at the end of the Second World War, courtesy of a, the criminals that ran the Western Alliance, including um, Churchill and Roosevelt. Uh, I don't have the highest opinion of Roosevelt at all, and I have a, 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 a begrudging opinion of Churchill, who was amazing but betrayed Europeans. But anyway, uh, Slovakia, amazing place. Interesting to see that they did that. Mm. Hopefully, you'll get some more uh, feedback. Uh, the organization, uh, just to be uh, yeah. perfectly accurate, is called the Christian Democratic Youth of Slovakia. Okay. Um, yeah, and it was on their website. It was uh, very, very interesting to hear from there. Definitely not on my bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> not on my bingo card. Well, I, <laughs> excuse me. I'll confess, I'm not familiar with the group myself. I am familiar with Slovakia, but not that group. So there's some comments here. Uh, Kingfish says, personal huge fan, made a huge difference in my worldview. Thanks. Is that Ernst, me, or both of us? Uh, please be clear, if you don't mind. Um, and then Nick has a question for us. Um, that really was what we're going to talk about today, but I guess we can diverge that direction. Uh, we had a little bit of time here. So uh, Nick Groves is asking, what's your take and uh, Ernst's take and opinion if the ANC are voted out, will it be handed over peacefully or it will be a riotous assembly? Hmm. You want to you want to wade into that puddle? Well, Chris, uh, this is where it gets very difficult because we don't really have uh, we don't really have a, a case study of the ANC losing power to the point where they are a cornered animal. So we, we're seeing the ANC losing support, but we've never seen the ANC government in a position where they're about to lose power. That's a whole diff new territory. There's there's no historical indication. There's no historical uh, similarity. Well, it's never happened. So it's very difficult to say. But based on similar situations where they were vying for power in the in history, 
that indicates to me that it's not going to be a peaceful affair. They're not just going to be handing over power peacefully. They're going to be holding on and trying every trick in the book. But like I said, this is new ground. This is new territory for South Africa uh, and ANC below 50%. Well, they are below 50%. That already happened in the 2019 elections, which is what people don't realize. They got just 46% of the votes nationwide. But votes nationwide really aren't germane other than trying to you know, keep a scorecard because it's how you get votes in a municipality. That's what makes the difference. But uh, they're yeah. already at below 50%, 46% there. And when you look at eligible voters, they only got 13% of South Africa's eligible voters. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. They are, they are not 13% um, popular. Excuse me. They're, they're not... 13% of the population, excuse me. They're not, uh, they're not, um, they're not a popular party and it's it's collapsing by the day. Cyril Ramaphosa's decision last night to not even shuffle the deck chairs, but just push a little dead wood aside, add more dead wood that's loyal to him and say that, well, we're not really going to solve this in the next year is really set the stage for uh, shellacking for the ANC in a legitimate free and fair election in 2024. People are angry that nothing is being done. The appointment of the so-called electricity minister, uh, former mayor of uh, Schwane, if I'm not mistaken, is not going to solve the problem. He's not going to be empowered. They're basically just kicking the can down the road. And that is in the face of businesses collapsing, uh, fuel prices off the charts, roads falling apart because the rails have been looted and destroyed, and all the trucks are on the road. We've got crazy truck drivers. Yesterday, 46 cars were totaled. No one died, fortunately, down in Umlanga in KZM because some truck driver went ballistic and drove through. It's just, this is insane. How many of these guys even licensed? This government doesn't care about South Africans. They only care about caters and they're just, you know, they're just waiting it out. And they, they think they're going to survive in 2024. In a free and fair election, I will tell you, if it's free and fair, if we're today, the ANC would be lucky to poll 33% of those who bother to go to vote. 33%. I predicted 38 to 42 percent a year ago, and I'm sticking to that figure because a lot can change. But if it were right now at this moment and people showed up at the polls, only one in three South Africans would be stupid enough to vote for the ANC. That's my take on it. And Kingfish says he likes both of us, inspired by both of us. So thank you for that, Kingfish. <laughs> oh, no, thank you very much. Yeah, Chris, uh, uh, lest there be fortification of the, the election, I mean, that would that would be the, the natural outcome. But uh, yeah, we, that's the other thing. That's why it gets very murky and difficult to make predictions because like I said, we've never been in this position where the ANC is forced to take out every trick in the book. And I mean, as uh, Professor Kuis Milan always reminds us, the ANC election machine only wakes up every five years. It goes into hibernation between that. So you, you're going to see a different ANC in 2024 and the lead up to 2024 than uh, what you do now. It's uh, especially an ANC that's going to be very desperate. What type of tactics they will in the world will, will uh, resort to using? I mean, that's where we're going to have to wait and see. I just hope. I don't think uh, trusting the IEC is the is, is all we, we can do. I mean, we are going to have to have a lot of eyes and ears going on to see if that everything is free and fair in that election. Um, I think uh, they, there's a high chance of, uh, of shenanigans. If you look at the, the just the trend all across the continent, um, the ANC is not special. They're not a special party. They don't have this uh, amazing moral compass. They will absolutely stoop to every dirty trick in the book. So uh, I, I hope that election is, uh, is it, it, people are watching that election and watching out for irregularities with a, hawk, a hawk's eye because uh, it's not outside of the realm of a possibility at all. Well, and it's not just uh, shenanigans and malfeasance. I mean, we've already proven that the Independent Electoral Commission is inept. We proved it last time in Cape Town and also in Zarist, where I was able to, through my in intervention in South African elections, uh, get uh, the Forum for Democrats the seat that they were cheated out of because, let's just say it was an error, but uh, an obvious mistake, 17 votes in a ward written down as 197 for the EFF. And then the IEC ignores the analyst who told them of that within 72 hours and then tells the party to get stuffed. Foot sec, it's too late. You waited two weeks. That's not the law in South Africa. They simply ignore the law of their rogue. What needs to happen in advance of 2024 right now is that all civic organizations that have any role in contesting and going to court over disputes and elections need to start harnessing and amassing funds now and be prepared to file lawsuits on the day after the results are announced because it's coming. It's going to happen and someone's going to have to do something about it. I'm just telling you right now. Also, you know, you talk about the uh, the ANC only gearing up every five years. Well, they're not alone. Where's the DA? Where, where's the IFP? Where's UDM? Where, where, where is ACDP? None of them are campaigning now. This is a mistake. 
It's a mistake. They should be campaigning 365 days a year. Have those people out. I've been saying this for years and I'm starting to get blue in the face here. It's frustrating. Politics is a blood sport. It's a 24 hour day, seven days a week, 365 day a year contest for the will of the people. If you want to govern and govern for the people, you must be among the people. Don't wait till 90 days before the election. DA last time and then have only one person speak on behalf of the entire country when the elections are local. John Steenhuisen is not going to change anything in Howick. John Steenhuisen is not going to change anything in Schwane. John Steenhuisen is not going to change anything in Zayrust. The local politicians who win the majority and get the mayoralship and control the council are the ones that can make the changes. And that's a huge mistake. Now, the next elections and national election, you want to put John Steenhuisen out there all the time or in Po Palazzi, have, have at it. It'll be fun. It'll be great. But in a local election, these, these parties just don't get it. They don't get it. And it's it's a very South African thing. It's also a European thing, to be honest. Um, maybe that's where the origin comes from. But it's very, very, very annoying that people wait until 90 days before an election. And that's when you do it. Europeans are like, oh, the coalition fell apart. We're going to have an election, snap election 90 days. In America, the elections don't happen that way because we don't have a parliamentary system. And we are prepared and they're out there fighting each and every day for voters. South Africans need to start doing that, uh, Aaron. So they have to do it. Mm. Well, Chris, uh, that's why it's also, I mean, you're lamenting the, the state of South African party politics, but that just enforces my point. That's why you shouldn't put all your eggs in, in one party politics basket. I mean, party politics is important. It's not something you should throw away or not participate in, but you also, also shouldn't bet the house on it. You should have a plan B in regards to your solution and the state proofing your community, taking uh, uh, your safety and security into your uh, your community's own hands. And uh, uh, self bestir is the, the, the plan B, the alternative. So that's if the, the opposition don't perform, if the opposition are caught asleep at the wheel, even though they're facing an ANC that's never been weaker in their, their history, um, you should have a, a, another option on the table. The, the outcome of 2024 uh, should not be the be-all and end-all on whether your community survives or is destroyed. Agreed, 100%. Now, earlier there was a comment from Herman Roos. Uh, Herman had said something about you know uh, safe areas and this, that, and the other and what's going on. Um, there are organizations out there that are doing this. Now, I'm not promoting them, but uh, they get a very, very much get a, a mislabel because a few of their members are very vocal on social media and people think they're wackadoodles. But the Sightlanders have a plan for people for evacuations to safe areas, a very serious plan. Um, that's an organization you can support. Afri Forum, and, and we talk about self bestir but there was this comment about uh, uh, a concentration of like minded folks and communities. And Afri Forum has identified a number of areas where there are concentrations of folks like that in South Africa to help with self bestir and, and administer yourself. Um, that's, I think, is something that people want, might want to take a look at as well, Afri Forum. Hmm. I mean, there's a, we have over 160 neighborhood watches all across the country. So, I mean, I made a tweet today saying that uh, if you live in the Western Cape, uh, I think you should definitely be looking at joining a, a neighborhood watch. Because, uh, I mean, the, if you look at the, the way that the Western Cape is changing, it's going, to, it's going to go the way of the rest of South Africa. If you don't have community safety structures in place, if you don't have neighborhood watches in place so those already exist but uh, new ones should also be started um, and if you live in the rest of south africa as well find a, a neighborhood watch or a similar safety structure farm patrol near you get involved and support them uh, i mean you don't have to give them money you just have to give them your time and support that's uh, that's all they need and uh, we we're racking up successes when it comes to our neighborhood watches by the day and you only have to go to afri forum's website to go see we we post as many of the successes as we can but most of them we don't even put post on the website because there's so many because everyone has every success to be posted on the website has to be written up all the details and a quote mm -hmm. and everything has to be put put to it so a lot of the successes uh, you'll find maybe in like a weekly roundup on forum news but uh, the tip of the iceberg of what the successes that we're already achieving you can find on our website um, it's definitely making a difference and it's making communities more resilient and uh, more secure in, in these troubling times. I mean, this is only the beginning. The more people, the more people get involved, the more successes they will be. That's a simple principle. Absolutely. I was just looking for something here while you're sharing that. I was trying to find a thing because I don't think you've given me permission to direct people to your channel, but it's gone now under the customization button. It was a thing here that allowed me to, you know, 
push people over to the next channel. I, I do that with Ronaldo now. I, what mm. I was thinking of, because I want to send people from this stream, so so if they stay here when it ends, they automatically get directed to your broadcast. But oh. you have to give me permission, but I, I, I can't find that now. What the heck is going on here? This is weird. Mm. Um, it was, it's was it been here for ages, so I'm just looking, and it's just Ugh, That's there. all right. Uh, I think most people uh, can find it when, when this ends. Just go to Conscious Caracol. We'll, we'll be over there. Um, I think that's not too difficult to figure out. No, um, it's not. But but people on YouTube are like people on Facebook are creatures of habit, and they they, they say they're going to do something. So it's a lot easier to grab somebody and pull them over, and then it's it's they they don't leave as quickly. So anyway, uh, if we're going to self government, we should not have to pay taxes. Well, David Johnson, I think we all agree that it's unfair to we pay taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just you know I pay. You're, you're gonna you're gonna fall over when you hear this figure, Aaron. I have a house that's not a mansion it's a simple three bedroom house which you know it's not huge it's made from wood and drywall not exactly brick it's no mansion i don't have a jacuzzi i don't i don't have a fire pool i don't have a deck i don't have a balcony i don't have any of that stuff just a basic house with a two-car garage i pay almost ten thousand us dollars a year in property taxes that's a hundred and seventy thousand rand in property tax alone i have to work just to pay or they would confiscate my house for failure to pay taxes that's insane that's mm. even if i didn't have a mortgage absolutely insane. what do i get for that <laughs> blm and antifa burning down everything that's what i get yeah anyway yeah. not not here thankfully this is this is a but the point is that i pay a lot of money for taxes so look you are preaching to the converted there buddy david johnson because i know exactly what you're talking about i don't like paying taxes when i'm not getting services to be fair though the local township which is the jurisdiction i'm not in a city i'm in a township so we have those but local township is not quite a county you have you have boroughs cities uh, in Pennsylvania, then you have townships, and then you have the county. And in the township, which is peri-urban, rural, um, and by the way, there's a couple houses worth three million U.S. dollars, just four kilometers from my house, in a nice little valley. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. we do get good services. They clean the roads. Uh, they keep the roads clear in the wintertime. They do good road repairs here. So that, I pay less than $1,000 a year, and that's my money well spent. But the rest of it, to the school district, pff, spare me. I'm not happy yeah, about the that. the life isn't fake, Chris. That's, uh, that's the long and short of it. Um, I just have to go quickly fill up my water, uh, make all right. sure all my lighting and stuff. Well, we is should fine. wrap. We should you wrap can, it up uh, here then. Yeah, but you can uh, you can still chat to your audience a little bit while I do that, and I'll see you on my channel in just a few minutes. Um, in, in eleven minutes, so that's Aaron's yeah. Sale, the conscious character. He's gonna head off, and then I'll wrap up and I'll, I'll get ready to join him on his channel. Don't forget to send me a yeah. link. I don't think you've sent me one yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you now. I haven't been able to, um, okay. but yeah. And also uh, go check out if you haven't yet uh, self bestir uh, on YouTube uh, the documentary. You spell it the same way as you'll see in the title here of uh, Chris's show. And uh, yeah, go share that link, share it with uh, everyone that needs to hear the message and see what's you know, the plans for the future. If you have any pessimistic friends or family, send it to them particularly. Um, and yeah, I, I appreciate everyone uh, uh, sharing the link. It's, uh, it's, it's very much appreciated. So yeah, cheers, guys. Have a good one. And I'll check you now in, in 10 minutes on my channel with me and the Colonel where we continue this conversation. Different topic, though. All right, we'll see you there. And by the way, speaking of sharing the link, I neglected to put it in the description for this video, so I'll take care of that shortly. <laughs> All right, folks, there you go. Conscious Character Ernst Fund Sale joining me uh, today to talk about self bestier um, No easy translation English, but I call it self-reliance. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? What do you think? Yes, it's a lot of taxes, Erica. Well, that's ta that's the house insurance and the taxes, almost $10,000 a year, over 150000 almost 170000 Rand a year. And this is not a wealthy neighborhood. This is not uh, an exclusive place. It's just a middle middle income sort of place. So you can imagine what wealthy people are playing. Yeah, thanks for the awesome stream, says Fiona. Yep, you guys have a lovely one. So um, an argument for renting. I wouldn't have to pay the taxes. All the taxes are passed on to you that way as well. They just put it in the cost. Anyway, folks, cheers. And we'll see you in a few minutes on Aaron's Fun Sales channel, The Conscious Caracol, to talk about Africa in 2023. Thank you all so much. God bless and have a lovely day. And we'll catch you later. Don't forget to check out my videos. I've done a video on Antifa in Atlanta today, as well as a video on Becca Chile talking about catching the murder of AKA Kieran Forbes and not finding the one of Brendan Horner. Cheers, everybody.